I'm a founder of a stealth AI startup where we have built AI for daily teams. Let me kick off this with um, an example of how we've done it. So imagine you have a dashboard uh, or you're trying to build a dashboard. Uh, in this case, we're doing this in Looker and you would like to um, have a bunch of SaaS metrics, you know, maybe something for your CFO or uh, chief operating officer. Um, what we're gonna see on the left here is us basically typing in very simple instructions such as add, um, you know, churn or add um, uh, MRR. And the AI behind the scenes will actually generate a lot of code uh, to power uh, the data model for those metrics. Here we just added the MRR. We selected some files that are relevant to, to that metric. But all the other things that you see on the left, that's automatically generated uh, code. We're not actually generating any of that ourselves. And there we go, we've got our dashboard. So let's talk about how do we actually do that. Uh, I am, uh, again, I'm a founder and CEO of a stealth AI company. Previously, I was an early employee a company called Looker. Uh, I'm also an, an alum of MIT, and I run this podcast and newsletter called MirData.Report. At a high level, the architecture right here is pretty simple. Um, imagine your business intelligence stack. We're basically somewhere in the middle between visualizations and the semantic layer. This allows us to train LLMs on top of existing code base rather than infer um, directly from the database, which is really hard. Um, what we'll cover, what I'll cover in the, in the next few slides is um, I want to talk to you first about general issues in code generation, uh, then uh, and some problems uh, in code generation, um, then uh, how ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot uh, work in, in the context of data and why they're not very good solutions. Uh, third, I will talk about uh, what we ourselves have learned from doing this. Uh, so code generation by, uh, you know, uh, by itself, uh, when, when you're trying to um, use LMs, uh, obviously runs into some problems. One of those problems is hallucinations. And the reason why we have hallucinations is because um, hallucinations, uh, you know, in order to handle hallucinations, we actually need to do something beyond um, synthesis. We actually need to also um, do repair and verification. But m the majority of LLMs that you see out there is just basically applying sy synthesis to more synthesis to more synthesis. Um, and, and so the system becomes very unstable. Uh, let's look at one hypothetical example, uh, a restaurant management application. Um, you know, let's imagine that we were designing such a software and um, if we had a restaurant application, we'd probably want to have some kind of um, ability to pull the total price of, you know, all reservations for the day. Um, is it possible? Yes. In terms of synthesis, um, you know, uh, it's totally possible. But what about repair? Well, in order to actually have repair, um, uh, you know, while it seems simple enough, um, the uh, schema changes can present the problem. Imagine you have a column called item price in the database, and the name of the column changes for some reason. You know, maybe because of uh, um, ETL script, maybe because of some kind of open source uh, change. It changes to item cost. Um, and um, uh, it seems simple enough. Uh, and in this case, we can probably just do, you know, make a change manually. Uh, but real world scenarios are a bit more complicated for us humans to do repairs manually. Uh, so we need an automated solution. Um, another problem that we kind of commonly encounter here is uh, that we that repair is also not enough. We also need verification. Uh, to make sure that data schema and code are consistent with each other. Uh, here, the machine 
generates, in this particular example, the machine gener generates fake data, uh, uh, fake data to test uh, this consistency. Uh, engineers commonly refer to this un as unit testing uh, in the traditional software paradigm. Uh, and we need something similar uh, when we're talking about um, verifying the accuracy of generated code uh, for production level systems. Um, so why can't we just take, you know, um, GitHub Copilot uh, or ChatGPT and, and rely on those systems? Well, the problem uh, with those systems is um, they don't have code from data teams. Uh, that code is proprietary to companies and is not available publicly to the world. So the majority of code that, um, you know, things like ChatGPT are trained on uh, ends up being um, publicly available tutorial level code um, and is not uh, reflective of real world scenarios. And that's why we need uh, application specific uh, AI systems. AI systems that are able to perform repairs and verification um, in uh, application level systems. And that's what we've built. Um, so here's some kind of you know high level things that we uh, we can um, that I'm going to cover here in terms of what we've learned. First, proprietary database uh, for a production level system. If you want to produce production level code, it's very important to have your own proprietary database uh, of real life scenarios that uh, you know that reflect the uh, the reflect how companies actually uh, work with data. Um, you also need to have support for multiple uh, demand specific languages. Modern applications in data uh, rely on uh, not just SQL, but uh, you know things like uh, LookML, uh, you know a variety of semantic languages and and uh, and that kind of stuff. Um, Next kind of big area to, um, you know, big uh, set of problems is how do you actually interpret and infer what people mean when they ask a particular question? Um, how, you know, what do people mean when they say MRR? Um, you know, in, in what context, right? Like uh, for which, I don't know, product line, for, uh, there's like so many dimensions to every single question. Uh, so you really need to kind of figure out like, how do you add context to every single question? There's no magic bullet, and it's a very complex uh, uh, problem. Um, third uh, is um, uh, how do we actually kind of compare uh, different blocks of code? Um, so if we uh, uh, look at, you know, an untrained eye looks at two different blocks of code, and they're not the same, uh, it doesn't mean that they're not going to produce uh, different results. Um, it's actually very likely that they might produce the same result. So there's not really like a you know um, a simple solution to this. Um, one thing that we constantly rely on is is just labeling, um, and um, you know we're still trying to figure out how to do this better. Uh, and then the fourth. Uh, kind of aspect of this whole big puzzle is that if you're working on real life code, it's bound to be uh, it's bound to be you know dirty. There might be bad practices in there that you actually do not want to introduce into your system. Um, there might be very specific uh, pieces of code uh, that are not generalizable and should not be actually again uh, kind of um, trained on. Uh, and then you might have static values that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it might actually be better to sort of figure out how to um, uh, extract them and clean them from the uh, from your database ahead of you know before you uh, introduce that database to them. Um, so that's all I have. Um, again, my name is Segamir, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you.